from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. AI continues to lead all sectors by a wide margin in terms of spending momentum, but that momentum has not led to an across-the-board boost in productivity or meaningful revenue gains for enterprises. Specifically, the adoption of Gen AI is increasing steadily, but the use cases are not yet self-funding. As such, the outlook for IT spending while slowly improving in the second half of 2024 remains constrained. Hello and welcome to this week's The Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we take a halfway checkpoint on AI adoption this year and its relationship to IT spending. We'll take a closer look at how IT decision makers are deploying Gen AI in production, some old and new blockers, and what we think needs to happen to generate greater returns for enterprise customers. As we set up top, the AI momentum soars above all sectors, and this chart shows the spending profiles for the various sectors tracked in ETR's quarterly technology spending intentions survey, TSIS, 19 sectors overall. Net score or spending velocity is shown on the vertical axis and pervasion or penetration into the data set for that sector is represented on the horizontal axis. The N in this survey is more than 1,700 IT decision makers, IT DMs, and that red dotted line at 40% indicates a highly elevated net score. You can see the steady climb for ML and AI since its momentum bottomed at 40%, still elevated, but bottomed at 40% eight quarters ago in October 2022, just one month prior to ChatGPT's announcement. Now, prior to the latest ETR survey, we generally saw across the board momentum compressing for almost all other sectors other than ML and AI. However, in the latest survey, we're seeing accelerated momentum for many sectors, including analytics, cloud, containers, data platforms, networking, RPA even, and servers. Now let's take a look at IT spending. The outlook is ticking up somewhat. This across the board trend that we talked about earlier is supported by the macro spending outlook. In this graph, we're showing the expectations for annual IT spending growth over time. And we reported before how coming out of the pandemic, IT spending growth expectations were inversely proportional to interest rates. And you can see them coming down on this chart as interest rates went up. That trend continued through the early fall of 2023, but we finished stronger last year than expected at 3.4% growth. And we came into 2024 with ITDMs expecting 4.3% spending growth for, for this year. Now that expectation moderated in our last survey, in the April survey from ETR, to 3.4%, but you can see in the latest survey, the July survey, we're seeing some renewed strength with a slight uptick to 3.7%. So the macro remains uncertain, however, with IT spending expectations just over current global GDP growth forecast of between 25 to 3%. You know, generally we'd like to see IT spending at, at least two to three, sometimes even four points ahead of GDP. Nonetheless, Gen AI continues to be the bell of the ball. We've reported extensively that AI has been stealing budget from other sectors at more than 40% of customer accounts. And as this data shows, evaluations and Gen AI, Gen AI adoption continues at a steady pace. Now, across nearly 1,800 IT decision makers, the percent of organizations that are not evaluating Gen AI has declined from 52% in April of 2023 to just 16% today. And the percent of customers that have selected at least one use case has doubled from around 40% to 80% over that same time frame. Now, you may be surprised at that 16% figure, i.e. those not evaluating Gen AI, but when we dig into that data and we talk to customers, we find a cohort of those accounts taking a wait and see attitude due to the fast pace of LOM innovation and concerns over privacy and compliance and legal concerns. And this is especially acute in the healthcare sector. Now, having said all that, enterprise use cases remain what we like to sometimes say chatty, meaning chat GPT-like. 
despite the high interest in Gen AI, when we dig deeper into those use cases that are going into production, we see they're very much what you would expect with ChatGPT and other popular LLMs. So of the 1,400 plus respondents who indicated that they've evaluated at least one use case, 25% said they were not in production yet. And when asked which use cases are in production, we see code generation, no surprise there, customer support, text summarization, and writing content as the top use cases which are with a little bit of image generation. Of note is that relative to previous quarters, these use cases are flat to down. New to this list, however, is summarizing meetings when you're taking a Zoom meeting or a WebEx meeting and AI pops out a summary. Search is also new in help desk use cases in IT, perhaps driven by ServiceNow and its integration of AI into its platform. But the point is, while adoption continues, the use cases, they don't appear to be game-changing in the sense that they're throwing off so much value that they become self-funding. They're nice, but very much like the kinds of use cases you would get from an off-the-shelf LLM. Now, budget is creeping up as a blocker to LLM adoption. To that point, the main barriers to bringing Gen AI into production remain privacy and legal concerns, but as shown here, budget and resource constraints are now cited by 20% of the respondents that don't have generative AI yet in production. It's also interesting to note that while concerns over data privacy and compliance continue to be the most pressing and prominent, organizations may be getting a handle on these concerns as it looks like they've peaked in the data and are slightly down this quarter. But coming back to the budget constraints, this again is another indicator that Gen AI ROI is not off the charts. The percent of customers reporting production use cases for retrieval augmented generation or RAG, for example, is in the single digits, the low single digits, in fact, in our latest survey from the ETR folks. So it's another indicator of possible resource constraints. At this point in time, AR, AI ROI is not where it is so obviously self-funding that it's fueling, not detracting from other sectors. Now, as we said in the past, enterprise ROI is going to come from domain-specific use cases, and we've used this notion of the Gen AI power law from the Cube Research many times, as shown here. Again, briefly, the point of this model is while there's lots of action today with very large and expensive to build language models for most enterprises. The real value is going to come from applying smaller language models, SLMs, to their specific business, driving unique value within an industry. An example would be, say, novel retail experiences or real-time supply chain adjustments so that you don't have to wait overnight in a batch job to actually correct the, the supply chain constraints or even longer. Hyper-automation in manufacturing or dramatically compressed drug discovery times. But these types of high value projects take time, resources, and lots of trial and error. And as such, the ROI for enterprises in production today remains limited. Sometimes we call it hitting singles. Moreover, we're seeing a higher percentage of customers push ROI payback expectations, the time frame, out to over 12 months. <laughs> Roughly 55 to 60% are still inside of that 12 month period, but we're seeing more push it out, which we think is prudent. Customer conversations confirm that the idea of applying small language models to specific domains has merit, but successful projects with much larger net present values or NPVs are going to take much more time, perhaps 18 to 24 months, or even in some cases years. So looking into the second half of 2024, let's dial in on some of the barometers that we can watch as indicators of progress for the second half of 2024. Starting with a narrative around inflation fears, that's flipped. Economic growth is slowing and unemployment is perhaps ticking up somewhat. So expectations for rate cuts in the September are back on the table, which is certainly driving positive sentiment in stock markets. And that could be a positive for IT spending. But let's not forget, this is an election year that's filled with uncertainty and that could bring dislocations in spending patterns depending on how that all plays out. The promise of Gen AI is it, it will close the productivity gap. It'll drive Eric Brynjolfsson of MIT said he expects three to four point improvement 
in productivity. You'd be disappointed if that wasn't the case directly from Gen AI. But so far, AI is not meaningfully materialized in measurable productivity or revenue gains. On the former, those productivity gains will most likely come from applications, i.e. existing apps with embedded AI from the likes of Microsoft, certainly with their co-pilot strategies, Salesforce with Einstein, Oracle, Workday, ServiceNow, and other application vendors. Watch small language models, again, SLMs, and domain-specific AI adoption, because that is going to be where we think you'll find new revenue production with novel experiences in retail, as we said, advances in robotics, highly advanced analytics applied to discovery of new drugs or new sources of energy, supply chain and logistics breakthroughs, and better forecasting. What are you seeing in terms of LLM adoption? How is it affecting other budgets that you have? And what are your expectations for payback size and timeframes? Let us know. All right, that's it for now. Thanks to Alex Myerson and Ken Schiffman on production. And they also do our podcast. Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters. And Rob Hoth is our editor-in-chief over at SiliconAngle.com. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts. Wherever you listen, just search Breaking Analysis Podcast. I publish each week on the QResearch.com and SiliconAngle.com. You want to get in touch, email me at david.vellante at SiliconAngle.com or DM me at dvellante or comment on our LinkedIn posts. And please do check out etr.ai. They get the best survey data in the enterprise tech business. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Breaking Analysis.